Okay, welcome everyone to the, um, to the event today, the Ecological Design Research and Computation Symposium. Um, we've got a great lineup of speakers today. We've got eight presentations by different practitioners from around the world. And I'd um, like to thank uh, Simos Yanis and the AA School for organizing this day. And my name is Terry Peters. I'm the guest editor of this issue of Architectural Design uh, called Experimental Green Strategies redefining ecological design research. And so the idea behind today was to get together some of the contributors from the AD and get them to talk more in detail about their work and their, and their practice. And I think what's, what's a bit unique about today is that we are researchers in an architecture school and we're going to have researchers from practice coming to talk about their work. So it's applied ecological design research. And, and that's quite interesting, and you can get a flavor of eight different approaches through different half-hour presentations. So I think it's a really great opportunity to go into a little more detail. And the issue of AD is available in the bookshop, and it has the different texts that people have written about their work with some great images, so you can kind of hear it and see it and, and go back and forth with that. So right now, I'm just going to give a little introduction to the day uh, and talk a little bit about what themes we're going to discuss. And I'm also going to go through just four or five of the main points of the issue as a whole so that you get a little bit of context of why we're looking at these issues. And maybe you can understand a bit why the different people were chosen to participate in this publication to sort of bring together a state of the art in applied ecological design research. So we're going to start, um, after my little introduction, we're gonna start with uh, Simos Yanis from the AA here, which I'm sure you all know. And then we're going to have Robert Aish, who's joining us from Autodesk Research, and Azam Khan, who's also here from Autodesk Research. And then we're going to have, uh, in the after lunch, we'll have Kasper Jorgensen from 3XN in Denmark. And we'll have both Judith Kimpian and Christian Derricks from ADIS here in London. Uh, we'll have Meredith Davey from Atelier 10 Engineers. And, and then in, we'll have a, a, a short break. And then the final session, we'll have Irene Galu and Giovanni Betty from Foster and Partners. And then I will give uh, a short talk about some of the projects that were done by people who aren't here today. So you get, I'm gonna go through five projects from people that, they're just a bit too far away to come for our lecture day. Projects in Japan and China um, and elsewhere. So I'll try to give you the highlights of that. And we'll have time for discussions after each of the sessions. So to go through a few of the key ideas, just to give you a little bit of context, I won't go into too much detail, I'll let everyone else do that. Um, but as I've said, the issue was really, uh, with putting together this publication, was to look at research and practice. And one of the, the key ideas was looking at what is ecological design research? What can it be? How can it become more architectural? Um, many people have asked me how we define ecological in the title. And I say, well, what's the difference? How are you using ecological and sustainable and, and you know, cite your sources. So uh, we, there's an introductory essay that goes into a bit of detail about that, but one of the essays in the book is an interview with Janine Bainas, who some of you might know who's a biomimicry expert. And she talks a bit about the difference between sustainability and ecological design. And, and the short answer, as you probably all know, is that ecological design would be place-based, really focused on the specific site. So we tried to take some of these ideas and weave them through the different research practices of, of these architects. And in the introduction, I do a short review of, of some current literature on the topic, and I'm proposing an ecological, an understanding of ecological design research as being 
able to combine different approaches, like the, the technological, the cultural, the systems-based, the user-focused, these strategies that come through the book, and combining them to try to create a definition of ecological design research that can be more architectural, and we can harness some of these ideas from technological approaches, cultural, systems-based, and user-focused, and try to come up with sort of taking these on and coming up with a more architectural definition um, to advance beyond optimizing and actually come towards uh, social and cultural agendas that can, that can come out of this. So I could talk about that forever. So I'll, I'll, I'll move on. Another thing is obviously ecologies. Different contributors to the book and different presenters today are looking at different ecologies. So the ecology within a building, the ecology within a neighborhood, the ecology within a design team, and looking at different definitions of how this works, and, and where's the designer's place in this? And when we're looking at applied architectural research and applied ecological design research, we're looking at the way that architects and designers have been responding is to create new ways of representing the new roles that they're taking on. There's now architects are going beyond traditional 2D or even 3D drawings and actually measuring, modeling, and simulating their designs. So as I'm sure a lot of you know, you're doing a lot more than 2D plans or sections or, or even 3D models. You're actually looking at different analysis tools, different computational strategies, and you're coming up with new ways of representing these new ideas. And one of the, the things that we tried to highlight in this AD and in this presentation day today is that the way that architects are responding is by developing in-house research and design groups in some cases. And another way of responding is to actually have green consultants on a design project in all sorts of ways. You know, um, environmental engineers, uh, different consultants on green planning, on different things to do with the community and the site. So no longer is the architect in charge of all of these different roles. It's actually becoming an enlarged design team, and in some cases, an in-house research team, which some of the, the people today are presenting from. And um, my own background is I'm a PhD student uh, in Denmark, and I'm also an architect. And this ties in a lot to my own research interests of practice and research coming together, because my research area is, is building transformation, is how to recycle buildings, recycle at a scale larger than component scale, actually reuse buildings. Um, some little tiny examples there, but thinking of how can we actually go beyond looking at efficiency and, and um, optimization and actually also look at things like cultural and, so, and societal needs in terms of material culture and preservation and transformation of buildings. Um, and one of the things that we addressed when we looked at the issue from the beginning is, is can a building ever be ecological? Can a soul building on its own? Um, of course, there's ecologies beyond a building, and buildings have sites, and buildings have environments, and and really future parameters of sustainability are being enlarged towards um, looking at waste and resource use and actually recycling as a way of using less raw materials. And it's also as part of a larger discussion of how we view the environment. We always hear people talking about the environment like it's not our environment. And I think that we have different ways of relating to nature, site, uh, and this has many different complex things that go into it, but one of the ways that we're looking at it in this AD is looking at, looking towards the future. You know, how can we develop an understanding of ecological design research that will benefit architecture, that will benefit society, and also the, the ecologies of our own communities and our own relationships. And, uh, whoops. 
the, this issue of AED is part of a series. Hmm. And uh, while I figure this out, I think we'll get, um, we'll ask Helen Castle here, who's the editor of the AD series from Wiley, um, to give a little bit of a background up to the AD. Helen, if you want to come up here. Good morning. Um, first of all, I just want to say a big thank you to um, CIMOS and to the AA for hosting this event today um, and getting a lot of great people involved. I know that Terry has also done a lot of work coordinating with CIMOS here, so thank you both of you for that. Um, Terry's been very modest in her um, presentation, introduction to herself today, um, because um, AD which um, we bring out six times a year um, with six different guest editors depends entirely on the commitment of the guest editors and their contributors. Contributors are asked not only to write, but rewrite, to reapply, and to keep and to look at proofs. It's a, it's a long process, and for, the, for a guest editor, um, it requires a lot of time and a, and a lot of passion. And Terry is someone who um, is both passionate and rigorous. And she also said in her introduction that she was a researcher and an architect. But there's a third role that she has, which is a great communicator. And there aren't a lot of great communicators in architecture. Um, she's a very good writer, and she's a lot of... Um, a lot of experience as a journalist as well, and she really applied this to the issue, um, not really rigorously thinking from the beginning about how can she can open up the subject and, and who to ask to contribute. And I think that's why it's such a strong issue, because it's so engaging. What I was really keen about the whole theme when we started talking about it early on was to move on the discussion about green and sustainability, because I think for students and from young practitioners, the notion of green and sustainability, so much lip service is now paid to it. It's become something that's coming from the establishment. Um, product manufacturers are using it in their marketing spiels, and it's, it's kind of losing its weight, its excitement. And I think what Terry has achieved with this issue is to put the excitement back into it. So um, it's an issue that I'm really proud of. So thank you very much, Terry, for that. Um, as she said, you can, you can buy copies from the bookshop, and I've been told but that you can get a special discount as well. And it's also, I have to, this is my last bit of plugging. <laughs> you can also buy it electronically now. If you have an iPad, we have an AD app, so you can download the issue um, as a, as a, as a, um, on the app. So that's another way of, of, of looking at it. But a great issue, and I'm really looking forward to hearing from all the contributors. So thank you also to the speakers who've given up time today to come along. Thank you. Thanks, Helen. I should also say that um, I ha we have actually taken this issue around the world a little bit on different uh, research days. And we recently um, had a, a day a bit like this one with uh, different presenters coming to show their work at the Autodesk University, which was in Las Vegas, which was a completely indifferent environment to this one, let's just say. It was 9,000 uh, CAD users from around the world came and uh, Robert H, who's here, uh, organized a session where some of the people who are speaking today spoke there and it was the most surreal experience ever. We had a, a space of um, a large lecture room where everyone received a copy of the AD and heard about how research could actually affect their practice, how, it, you know, how could they use research and, and how could computation and ecological design go together. And it's, it's a very interesting question. And as I was researching for this book, I found that it's surprising how much you find the ecological and, and sustainability groups in offices are also the computation groups in offices. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. It's like there's a definite connection here to new ways of working, new ways of measuring, modeling, simulating designs, and really could 
produce great results for more sustainable <coughs> architecture. And uh, we also had a great book launch at the 3XN offices in, in Copenhagen in Denmark. And uh, we'll have Casper speaking this afternoon um, from them. That was also a great party. And, um, and then as m part of my own teaching um, at the Aarhus School of Architecture in Denmark, we've run seminars on this topic. So there, I think there is a lot of depth in these issues and a lot of different ways of presenting them. And here we've just got you know, 16 contributors to the book and eight presentations today, but there are so many ways to approach this topic. And hopefully you're all approaching these aspects in your work. Um, so that's, that's a very brief introduction to some of the themes that we'll be talking about today. And now maybe I'll give you a bit of a insight into the first session this morning. Um, the first speaker we have is, uh, is Simos Yanis, who you, who you all know from the AA here. And he's the director of the Environment and Energy Studies program. And he's also the coordinator of the school's PhD program. And what was really interesting about Seamus's essay that he contributed to the book, uh, which was called Adaptive Strategies for an Ecological Architecture, is he was able to draw on all of these years of experience in, in teaching and researching and designing and looking at how things have changed and really getting all of the best ideas together of how, how it will move forward. And um, he talked about ideas of attunement, mapping, adaptation, symbiosis. And it was, it was really interesting how he talked about how ecological design could be considered over time, about user behavior. And that's something we all know, but I mean, really, how do we embed that in our designs? So we're looking forward to Simos's lecture. And I'll just give you a hint of what, what's to come for the rest of the session. Then we were followed by Robert Aish. Um, who's studied industrial design at the Royal College of Art in London, and he has a PhD in computer, uh, human-computer interaction. So he's one of the pioneers of computational design tools. He's developed engineering software with Arup, architectural software with RuCaps, naval architecture software with Intergraph, and he's most well-known to maybe you guys who are probably using it as generative component software. Uh, with, um, with Bentley and his current role at Autodesk is quite fascinating that his is to bring in generative design ideas and real innovation concepts in design computing and actually put them into mainstream design and engineering software. So it's a pretty fascinating perspective that we can all sort of see that. And then afterwards we have um, Azam Khan, also from Autodesk Research, and he can enlighten you a bit about the cover image, I think. And, uh, and he's part of the Environment and Ergonomics Research Group at Autodesk in Toronto, Canada. And he's been exploring how modeling and simulation, including physics-based generative design, airflow, occupant flow, in an architectural context. So I think some of you will find that quite interesting. And, and how real-time user behavior can be feedback into these design models. He's also the founder of CIMOD, the CIMOD conference, uh, which is about simulation architectural research. So that's an overview of what, what we'll be talking about this morning. So I'll hand over now to Simos Yanis, who will start us off. Thank you very much.